Well g'day, it's Glav here again. Today's not a bike video, rather it's a commentary about travel insurance for Australian bikers wishing to ride overseas. So for those that are expecting a bike video, please turn off now. The best way for me to talk about travel insurance is to convey my own story. I recently went to book insurance for a trip we're doing to the US next year where we're doing a lot of riding. I noted that my bank, because I always book my insurance through my bank, had changed insurers. So therefore when they e emailed me back the product disclosure statement, the PDS, I thought for once that I'd go through it, which I've got to tell you is a right royal pain in the backside because these things are often 50 and 60 pages long. However, what made me want to do this was I recently made my first claim on travel insurance and it was as simple as this. Um, I broke a tooth while I was overseas. Um, it was a crowned tooth. So I made a claim when I got back because it cost me almost a grand to fix. The insurance company uh, was good enough to ring me and not send me a letter just to advise that my claim had been denied and why it had been denied was that the claim, the PDS, the terms and conditions was that they only cover natural teeth. So whilst I broke my natural tooth which had a crown on it, it was therefore not covered. The point to why I'm telling you this is you need to look at the terms and conditions contained within the PDS very, very carefully. So that made me want to check further. So I looked into it further and yes, motorcycles were covered. And then when you get into the really fine print, I was horrified to discover they are only covered up to 200cc. And for those who watch my videos would realise I ride Harleys which are big cubic capacity motorcycles. Therefore I wasn't covered. I then thought, oh I have an upcoming trip to Asia. I better check the PDS on that. And then again had another oh crap experience and found that the upcoming trip wasn't covered for motorcycles over 200cc either. Therefore, I've probably been riding in Asia for the last 12 plus months without proper travel insurance when I'm riding, which is a horrifying thing when you think about it. Never mind, long story short, there are many policies out there if you go to look that actually do cover motorcycles irrelevant of the cubic capacity of the motorcycles. The point I'm trying to make is you need to be very, very careful when you are intending to ride a motorcycle overseas that the travel insurance you choose actually covers you for the bike you're going to ride. There are a few other important points to note so you don't get caught out if you do have an accident. There has been a bucket load of stuff in the Australian media recently about bad news stories about people having motorcycle accidents overseas, particularly in Asia and places like Thailand and Bali, and the outcome hasn't been good for them and the insurance companies have denied insurance. Now these are woe are me stories and whilst I feel terribly bad for the people that have an accident, I look at the circumstances that are involved and of course the journalists want to sensationalise everything and generally speaking, from what I can see, the insurance companies are quite within their rights to deny the claims. So, there's some things that should be considered. You need to have the equivalent Australian motorcycle license for whatever bike you're going to ride overseas. If you don't have the equivalent Australian motorcycle license and you have an accident on a bike overseas, then it's likely the insurance company is going to deny your claim. Secondly, you need to look at the country you're going to and see if they require an international license. Many hire companies in Asia, for example, for both cars and bikes, don't even ask for your license. They'll ask for your passport, they'll ask for your credit card, because at the end of the day for them it's all about money. And that's all okay until you have an accident, and that, that's where the real strife starts. There are other issues to consider, like countries like Thailand. They don't actually accept local Australian licences as being valid in Thailand. So if you get pulled up by the police, you're going to get booked and fined. You need to have an international licence. 
The point is you can research which countries you need international licenses before you go and they're a piece of cake, you just drop into RACQ or the equivalent in other states and it costs you, I can't remember, 40 or 50 bucks and 15 minutes of your time and you walk away with an international license. The third thing you need to consider, there are some countries in Asia, like China for example, and unless you have a local license, i.e. a Chinese license, you cannot drive on an international license or an Australian license. It's just straight out illegal. So in su a summary to all of this is, buy an insurance policy that provides you the exact coverage you need in terms of the motorcycle you're going to ride overseas. Check the PDS carefully. Secondly, check what license you need for that country. Make sure you have the right license because if you don't, it is likely that the insurance company will deny your claim. As I mentioned earlier, there's bucket loads on the news and the TV right now about young Australians going overseas and hiring scooters that are 100cc but they don't have a motorbike licence. Therefore, claim denied. The outcome for not having insurance in some foreign countries is pretty ugly. I can tell you that I had a mate that had an accident and he wound up in a public hospital in an Asian country and that public hospital, the ward he was in, probably had over a hundred patients lying, lying there banged up in that ward and it was probably close to 40 degrees Celsius as well, so pretty uncomfortable. The next thing is, at that public hospital, you are not a resident of that country, so guess what? You're gonna pay anyway. So I get out with the credit card, um, and you're going to pay because if not you're not going to be treated. So the thing to remember here is be careful and organise your insurance properly. The purpose of this video wasn't to discourage anyone, it's just to help you avoid the pitfalls that I've seen many others make, including almost myself. I hope this video today has helped and always remember keep the shiny side up and live life today. Talk to you soon. Cheers.